Hello, welcome to the script story with the Queen Viola. And uh, guess what? We have this every Sundays. We do uh, upload it on our YouTube channel. That is Queen Viola. Make sure you check that out. And uh, for so long, if you've not watched our videos yet, I've talked about Tiz Cam Music being the sponsors of the script story with the Queen Viola. And guess what? Today I am so honored that I am actually having the story with him. And uh, straight away, we should welcome him. We have, he is a producer, he is an artist, he is uh, he's so many things he will have to tell us that. But of course, uh, for now, don't forget to visit our web, our website, that is the Fortizicam, I mean a page on Facebook. And also you have to visit uh, Queen Viola and uh, to my guests. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. How do you always how do you always uh, adjust with people when you have dreadlocks? Because I suffer a lot like they'll be like Rasta, Rasta, Rasta. <laughs> You know, Rasta, Rastafarians are always the coolest guys, you know, around town, so uh, where I be, I'm always humble, so I respond in a good way. So what you're telling me is that you are a Rasta? I'm a Rasta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Rasta, you know? are you are you with the religion the religion part that they say oh no, I'm, I'm just a good Rasta man. Yeah, good Rasta I'm one. Good Rasta. All right then, so you <laughs> will have a lot of names. I mean I know of um Fanangala, I was yeah, known yeah. of uh, Ice, I was known of <laughs> Ice Pyro, so Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Wait, which are, which are should people use? Names are always uh, about um, how comfortable people who call me, you know. Mm. Um comfortable with what you would call me out of this conversation today we have and if you have any name for me i'll be happy i'll respond to that okay yeah so as you say i should it's up to me but now i want you to know are you only doing pro music production or you are only an artist or you are both or you are more i think the best way i can put it to you is that uh i'm music itself so i'm doing music and uh i have to hit every corner so so you are a producer, you are music, you are an artist, you yeah, are music. music. We have to try all this one. All right. So, <laughs> so, okay, let's get back to when you started music then, because I personally as well, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of your songs, but then I don't know when you started music itself. Yeah, professionally, actually, um, uh, should I say professionally? Or well, yeah, you are a professional okay. right Professionally, now. Um, like hitting studio to go and record music down, you know, beginning to put in that finance part is, um, that was 2005. Yeah. 2005. That's 2005. How about the production aspect of it? The production aspect, um, you know, it has been always something that you're into, but uh, you just didn't have the chance and the time to begin doing it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, the production part, I just started off uh, not far, but around 2000, uh, say 2015, 16. Mm. Yeah. That was that was 10 years after you doing music. Did, yeah. you feel, did you feel like people were not producing the songs like you wanted to, them to? Or like you just wanted to also be a producer? You know, uh, we usually used to have uh, issues, you know, sometimes you get a demo of the song from the studio, you go, you you come to pick your final song, mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is new to you, you know, so that thing usually didn't go well with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but I started composing, you know, in that when I'm in the studio with the producer, mm -hmm. I have to build that vibe with the producer, I have to make sure the producer is going by what is playing in my head. The drums I have in my head, I tell him, you know, I give him sound. So okay, play it this way, play it like this, and give him some. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, we get music. <laughs> so I co I began composing the music. Yes. Ah, yeah. that's a little bit difficult because mm -hmm. uh, being a producer and also an artist, don't you think like sometimes when artists come to you to record their songs, they'll be like, ah, how comes you dig mine like this and uh, yours is always up there. <laughs> oh, well, you've never faced that. Maybe maybe you've got that. Well, well, I know we faced that a lot, especially um. At where we are now, we, we, we face that a lot. Mm -hmm. People come here and feel like our music is different from, you know, maybe we don't put in much time. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is that um, most artists forget that uh, when they're doing their music, it is them to spice it up, you see? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm doing my music, no matter the producer, no matter the person I'm working with, I will still get 
that field of Anangala people here. Mm. Yeah. But some artists it's because they are lost. They they you know they want to do music but they cannot even uh, think of one instrument. You see? Wait, me as an artist, am I supposed to get you? No, it's not a must for you to know instrument, but yeah. at least learn some desks. Before you say I want my music like that, then coming you say you want your song like for you know who that is uh, like whiskey like who before you do that you have to at least know some mm. know some you know it's all about being different but if you, you you coming to a producer with somebody's already made beat and you want we remake it that is not being creative mm. that is copying that's what it that's not being creative at all. <laughs> well, you, you did hit those as well, like, you know, being an artist and then you go to the studios, you tell a producer, you'll be like, okay, this is how I want my song to be done. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, the music doesn't come out the way you want to. And then me, being an artist, I go to the studio, then I tell you, you know, do they sometimes it's also out of the frustrations that they do that? You see, sometimes it is a way of approach, how you approach these people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you approach a producer in a good way, you will have the vibes. And sometimes you see, it's also talent matters. You can say you want something good, and yet it is rubbish to the producer. So, <laughs> what do you expect? You know, that, that, to be honest, you know, sometimes if you stay the whole day in the studio and you see sometimes the kind of work that happens, mm -hmm. uh, you cannot, you cannot really say that uh, it's a a good job you're doing you know mm -hmm. sometimes you know you you care for your work you care for what you put in you see now people you're beginning to get audience you're beginning to get you know followers up there mm -hmm. and then you have to now begin working on your sound and on yourself you don't just release any work at any given time you just work with anybody anyhow no you have to have at least now that circle that guides you you know so no offense but that's the truth you see mm -hmm. Some work is just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Somebody will come and say, I want to work like this, but it's, it's totally off music. You see? Mm -hmm. So it, it's really important. I mean, Fanan, meaning a musician, right? Oh, how, how, how is that in Arabic? Fanan, it's a song. Uh, a song. Fanan is a song. Yeah, I'm not an artist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. now you did say that, you know. Okay, before that, though, are you talented or you went to school to do music? Honestly, I did not go to school to do music, but um, I think I just grew up in a musical environment because the Sunday school things, you know, you get to... Wait, why is it that most people who are artists do musicians are saying, okay, no, I've been in Sunday school, no, I was a choir This one school. I'm going to add you about it because yeah. most, most some, of them people, some people, some mm. people, they think it's cool to say that. And some people they think it's a ha it's, it's, it's habit, you know, it's a habit for artists to say that. Oh, the coolest artists always say they be from church, you know. But me, for my case, I I, I can prove it. Mm. I can prove it because uh, my community, as I grew, they also grew knowing me as member of uh, you know Sunday school to choir like that. So, yeah. <laughs> we can go back home, we can go back home, they will be yeah. like, so this is Fanana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy used to, you know, and you know, that's why <laughs> I didn't have so much, you know, wrangles with, you know, when it comes to this music part, you know, much wrangles with parents here and there. I think they, they just saw that in me, but they were not agreeing right away because maybe, you know, always every parent want to push you for school and all that, and they always because where I come from, music used to be like the police. Yeah, because you know, like you ladies, if you, if you don't know how to cook, they will sing you. So you have to learn how to cook. If you don't know um, how to, you know, do lady things, they will sing you, you know, they understand. <laughs> The lady come on. <laughs> you know now, you know how to uh, sit, how to kneel down, serve food, you know. If you don't know, they go sing you and you don't want to get ashamed. Uh, you know? If you if uh, boys if you steal, they will sing you, everybody will get to know you. So you go to those Wait, like you have to really mention my name in the song. Yeah, they, they, those artists they used to. No. Yeah, they used to. They sing with your name and then ah, everybody gets to know about your problem, you get ashamed. And then tomorrow, next tomorrow, nobody wants to do that kind of mistake. Mm. So it really helped the community a lot. 
Okay, so what you're trying to say is your community as well helped you build your current career and also your family. Yeah, I would say my family, I will not say much. <laughs> <laughs> You know family issues now, you know family, they wish you well, yeah, they, 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 might love, they might love what you're doing, but they will not show it. That's most families in Africa, they will not show it. You know, they will accept later on when they now see, oh, the success coming. Mm -hmm. Then they will say, oh, yeah, my son, you can, yeah, you love this, your music, you know, you're doing well, you're doing well. So you're telling me that right now they have started coming like, okay, my son is doing well. I'm not saying that because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what is in their hearts, man, I, I don't know. Yeah, how, you know, I usually know when, I, back then, you know, because I, I used to hide the music from them, so mm. I kept it to myself, I kept it home. Mm. So... I could not put them into this thing so much. So when I'm home, I don't like people telling me about the music. That's for sure. Don't ask me about my music. Let's chill. Uh, you just enjoy homely lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how is how is it right now? Uh, maybe taking you back to the community. You know, the church leader. Are they impressed that at least you're doing something or changing the uh, narrative of being a musician? Well. Um, Usually, you know, when you talk about the good deeds, people take you like you riding around. But uh, I might not mention names, I might not mention what I've done for the community, but I know my community, the ones who appreciate, they know I've been there for the community and I'm doing stuff for the community. Till day to day. Mm. Yeah, even I go beyond my limits for the community. But it's just not my particular community, but every community that comes on my way that I can reach with help, I do that. Mm. Yeah, because uh, in 2000, um, was it uh, 2015, 14, mm -hmm. I had a project, it was called, um, we were doing fundraising, we wanted to get uh, parts for the girls mm -hmm. at uh, Buyani mm -hmm. camp, refugee settlement, yeah. But uh, it reached in the middle, it did go through, you know, a lot of challenges, the, you know, uh, the fundraising, we did uh, fundraising for the, you know, pads and uh, things did go, you know, we did not reach that goal, but yeah, uh, I'm always there for community, yeah. So are you thinking of doing something then, maybe for the community, I don't know. Apart from singing, by the way, singing alone is you trying to talk to your people, so. Yeah. Um, you see, if you listen to my music, of course, you'll see that I'm attached to my people. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that um, my music, usually I want to reach out to people and uh, I, I always want people to learn something from each step I take, you know. Mm -hmm. Because um, many people say they might have come from a dull background, but uh, some people, they don't really show that they want to change you know, for others not to follow the same. But I'm here, for me, I'm fully, you know, I do things that I want to reach out to people and I always want people to be part of it, you know. The ones who can jump with me on the boat, we sail away. Now, talking about music, were you not scared uh, when you started singing in your own language? Or did you start singing in your own language before that? Because I realized most of your songs, at mm -hmm. least you have a touch of your language, native language in it. Yeah. And I you know your fans are also in the diaspora. You're not scared like they might not uh, find or feel the, the depth of the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, um, uh, when I started this music, it was uh, those days was really stubborn, you know, and it was hip hop you still music. Look stubborn, <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed. Now. I'm a humble guy, so um, you know, back then it was you know music from the Western world that was just beating up here. The Tupac, you know, uh, B.I.G. Notorious, you know, Jay Z's, the what? So those were the music we were looking at, you know. And then when we woke up like that, it was the things we were trying to all do, you know. Uh, feel like a gangster and yet <laughs> there's nothing to be gangster about in this <laughs> you're, actually, you're actually like mm -hmm. a gangster right now. Right now? <laughs> no, this, this is a, a gangster with good, you know, huh. yeah, okay. good things. You know. <laughs> so uh, way back then you, you were also singing in your language? That is no, 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 no. 
back then, you know, we could do these uh, rap battles and rap words, so it has to be English. And it was one of the reasons, you know, we had to learn English very fast, you know. Yeah, but then, um, that was 2006. I remember I was in the studio and uh, the, uh, the producer wasn't even, you know, doesn't know my language. And then one time, you know, we were recording mm -hmm. and I felt like I needed something, you know, I needed something new. And I tried the language to my surprise. Everybody was praising me. And they were like, this is new. I love this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that time, um, this side, this part here, um, artists like Sakodie, they were not uh, hard. But me, I was somebody who used to do research. Until day to day, the music I listen to, if I play to you, you'll ask yourself, who are these artists? Who are they even from, you know? I listen to rare music and I like listening to people from, you know, I do that from different places and, you know, I like that. So, I, me, me has me to discover, um, not to the world, but to myself, I, I got to know artists like Sakode uh, around 2006 and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, this, this is good. So when he used to do his thing, then, uh, you know, I had to change my stuff as well. So I started rapping in the language, people were praising it. They kept on supporting me whenever I switched to English. Said, no, 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 that language. And they had no idea, they don't even understand the language. <laughs> no, that language. So this is how it became part of me. And that time, even I was not good at the language. I could repeat things, but they don't understand. It made things easier for me. <laughs> I just sing a few words, I repeat myself. They don't understand. They say, oh, this is it. You've killed it. That was not fair. You I took was, advantage yeah. of your fans. And you know, because when I used to do rap in English, sing in English, it's like the producer so much about my work. This is wrong. This is wrong English. You said this, you know. So it was very hectic. Mm. This time I'm doing a song, it was much frustration with the language. But now when I got to this language, it was really something good. You know? mm. I enjoyed it after some time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So now, I, want to, I don't know if you face difficulties uh, being a producer right now and as, as well with the language. Being in South Sudanese, you know, like we're so much sometimes we talk too much about tribalism, and then like, do you always get fans from different tribes? And then they'll be like, okay, you know, your song is really nice, and uh, you why can't you just do it in English instead? Well, um, even if you talk of English, English is not my language, and as I told you before, by then when I used to rap in English and do all these things, you can see everybody's about my business, the English is broken, the what is what. So it was hectic, but now I'm in my own skin now. I'm more comfortable. So loving me, I will not force somebody to love me. But true love is when somebody loves you for who you are. Mm -hmm. So if they love me for who I am today, it means um, that is. It means that uh, these people they are now looking to a new Jerusalem Sudan because. That's how the new Jum Sudan has to look like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you're from, what village are you from, what you do in that village, but it's about discovering one another's talents and uh, the traditions and respecting it. And all you, you, you respect and you can even be part of it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you are, the boundaries max you as South Sudanese, you see. So why would you really look at the part where I'm coming from and what we do. If we live naked in my village, is none of your business, you see. <laughs> so long as we're happy. And if people look at me naked in my village, they're not going to say, yeah, this tribe. They're going to say, South Sudan people live naked, you see. So if I'm going to shame you, it means we're all ashamed, you see. So I don't see why people should look at that, you know, in that kind of... All right then, so we need way forward to the challenges that artists are facing as well producers are facing. I know you have them. If you want to mention them, it's fine. But again, what can we do for us to avoid these problems in our industry? To be honest, um, people face problems and people face challenges. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something smooth, then you know there is a problem, a big problem. Instead? You know, yes, even when you're being with friends and everybody's showing you love, you know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be this one friend that you will not catch up. 
there's always going to be this even your best friend that you always you will break up and make up mm -hmm. but if you don't do that both of you are pretending there's something if you're lovers you don't do that you're cheating you see because everybody's playing the game and everybody's playing smart mm -hmm. so these challenges to me i see them they are of they are normal we expect them to happen but um it's about sometimes how do you stand to face these challenges because mm -hmm. There's nothing in this world you can you can do right now that you don't you can face any challenge, you know. So you, to achieve your dreams, you have to face challenges. You will find people who will hate what you do. Mm -hmm. You will find people who will not love what you do, or even your music, or some people will just hate you for no reason. And I've got even such people who just don't even want to hear my name, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. But at the end of the day, you ask yourself, okay, this person, the more they hate, what, of what use are they to you, you see? And they don't help you, and it's just crazy. So you just leave them where they are, and you carry on with your life. Focus on what really matters to you. And for the industry, I just feel like um, uh, some people are giving up, but uh, it's not about giving up. If you're doing this for the love, you can do it as much as you can, mm -hmm. you know. But now people are money-minded, you know. So everybody gets to the industry knowing there's money in this shit. I'm going to get money. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there should be money. There yeah, be money. there's money in this stuff. Yes, there is money. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, there is an artist. He's um, in Senegal. The guy, he used to be a street performer. He used to play music, sing in the streets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He spent almost all of his life doing that. And now he was now in his, I think, 40 or 50. Mm -hmm. This is when a label signed him. And then he got money wow. that now, he even forgot how many years he has been on the streets playing stuff. So you want to tell me he was doing it for money? That was it for money. That was passion. But I mean, with the industry, there are others who are there for the money. There are others there for the fame. There are others who are there because they do it out of passion. What is money? Money is an element. You know? Money is an element. So, if money is an element in life, mm -hmm. so an element is something you get and you can choose what to do with it. You see? So, when you get money, you choose what to do, either bad or good. So, if money is that element we're talking about right now, it means it can also be lost, you know? It is just not there, it's an element you get. No. You work for it, you get it, and then see how you do about it. So you cannot tell me that, you know, you enter in a business, you know very well, in every business there are risks you have to take, mm -hmm. And sometimes the business will not work for you. And it's good that music allows everybody to try, but only if you make it. Mm. Yeah. Now, you're 80% or even 99% of the time right here in Uganda. And it's always not easy for artists to end their diaspora to get their songs played play back home. How do you always manage uh, coordinating with people at home to, for your songs to get played on radio stations, on TV stations, or even personally? Yeah, as I said before, I always want to do something that is attaching to my people, something that will always get connected to my people. Mm -hmm. So um, the way I do it, sometimes I let I, I would say good, good work speak for itself. But, <laughs> 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 that, that, your time. It is that, your time to that, try yeah, time. <laughs> that would be much of me to say that right now because the dream is too big and uh, we're just like um, zero point I think one percent right now. So the dream is too big. But what I can say is that, uh, you know, always people who are out there, if you have a good work like this, mm -hmm. don't forget your people back home. You have to reach out to people, get connected with people, you know, people like, you know, bloggers, the presenters and all these things, get connected to them and then see how they can help you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there is something about you that no matter what you do, you're not going to change. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in a white man's land or where you do this music there. They yeah, so tomorrow, next tomorrow, um, they will not vote you. You know, when it comes to awardings and all these things, they, they, they have their own people to vote for. So 
you always have to have that solid fan base and the solid fan base begins from home mm -hmm. so we always have to you know, find okay. ways of getting back home so i am uh, talking about voting in the words how many trophies or awards do you have right now i mean it's been a long journey <laughs> <laughs> Awards, uh, honestly, awards are there. I cannot measure numbers for now, but um, I've got awards. I've got awards, and uh, with no number. No, it's numberless. But there's number, but uh, I did, just didn't have track of it. Mm. But awards are there, and we're still winning. And we still want to get more you know, bigger things to come. Yeah. All right, so in case you're watching for the very first time, this is the script story with the Queen Viola, and today we are having the CEO of uh, Tizicum Music, and as well, we are right here at uh, God Above Everything Studios, and it's uh, quite a nice one as well, and he is as well the CEO, by the way, he's the producer here, and as well, he's an artist. So yeah, we would want to talk about Tizicum shortly, I mean, just briefly, because they are also the sponsors of the script right now among the sponsors of the script and I, if you've been following some of our episodes you've been seeing us talking about a tis cub tis cub tis cub music so right now would love him to tell us a little bit about tis cub music yeah um first uh, i would like to thank you guys for doing what you're doing and uh we really appreciate what you people are doing and uh for the viewers, we also appreciate you. You keep following. Make sure you subscribe to her. Yeah. So, um, with TZ Camp, TZ Camp Music is uh, our home thing. Yeah. So TZ Camp Music has been there. I might have founded it, but there are people with uh, <laughs> there are people with shares. So I'm uh, one of the representatives. Um, yeah, because I have to be clear with my people. So. <laughs> one of the representatives mm -hmm. you know let me not get everybody's credit like uh, i'm a big boss here of course of course you are <laughs> <laughs> you are ah, boss. no no, no. Okay. we try mm -hmm. we try we shall get there so um tizika music is a uh, south sudanese south sudanese south south sudanese south sudanese yeah south sudanese um one of the finest should i say one of the finest record label mm -hmm. at the moment and uh, we here, we here, we here for Jim Sudan, and we still looking for talents out there. And um, you don't really have to look for us, but we shall get you. We mm. have the talent. Mm. We shall get you. Am I allowed to ask how many artists oh, you've signed? No, it's fine. It's mm. fine. We have artists, and we have artists that their contracts finished, and they are ready. Really? They're paving their ways, you know. You know, this thing sometimes it's not about holding somebody for long because South Sudan music industry is just small. Mm -hmm. And what we care for is giving somebody a push. We give you a push, and if you still want to work with us, we still work with you. Okay. And if you want to go on, you can go on. We are still one, we don't need to fight you tomorrow, next tomorrow. We still eat from same table. Mm. So what do you do for the artists that you've signed? Do you record video audios? Do you record their videos as well? And uh, do you sponsor them? Pay rent or something like that? Yeah, um, no, no, no. Um, I'm not going to say we do all that. But uh, the, the most part that we do is uh, we promote. Uh, we give them audio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, video by then. Video, we are not so much on video. But we are more building their careers mm. like you know you cannot shoot a video if you don't have really fine song mm. so we work on you we discipline you very well in the audio <laughs> <laughs> so when you're now okay then we, we begin with the video mm. yeah okay mm. all right then don't come looking for them they will look for you that means you need to work very hard for mm. you to be signed at the tis come music well we have to be summarizing right now and uh, how can people get to the movie either it's having a website uh, page number maybe they just want to follow up currently right now you can uh, get our YouTube channel, of course we're going to update some things there and then you can get um, us on Facebook page uh, our website um, it had some issues so it has been shut down yeah it was www.tiscamusic.com but uh, it 
have some issues uh, which is down mm -hmm. but uh, for now we, you can find us on uh, Facebook we, uh, we have a WhatsApp group that is always there yeah people post their things in and you can post yours as well out there you never know oh, one of our ARs you know will get to you that's an artist and repertoire so you know these are the people who get us artists mm. yeah so you never know you know so you can find that number on our page for physical music and then you can be part of us as well ah, as you summarize are you married are you seeing someone <laughs> well thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel that is queen view and check us as well on facebook you can check us as well on twitter meanwhile thank you so much that question you can ask him particularly if you want to get the answer if he is married or oh, he's not married but yeah